Then it starts. You guys have any questions at this point? Because I don't know how I'm doing on time. How am I doing, Rich? Well, I got 20 minutes. Okay, oh, I got plenty of time. Um, then it starts, and you can just see the build out. I mean, this is the first tee. This is a commissioner's tent. Uh, bleachers. I mean, this area was really, really cool. And this was, this was uh, pretty cool for me. I got to meet uh, George W. Bush. Um, so obviously that was cool for me and just the opening ceremonies. I mean, crowds were really big I and mean, they were huge. You know, crowds were probably, I mean, for the memorial, our peak for our memorial might be a little bit bigger, but the difference is for the memorial, you know, Thursday's not a big day, Friday's a little bit big, Saturday's real big, then Sunday sort of slopes off. We had sustained crowds consistently for those four days. And the crowds were very much more consolidated, being that some holes there's only you know five matches going on, so they're trying to get around those matches. So the movement of people was a lot more condensed. You know, this is a double decker structure that we talked about. That stayed up all year. I mean, you look at that's 14, all the people, pretty damn cool. We're, we're doing well going into uh, Thursday. Uh, obviously, we had the mascot, uh, Sammy the Squirrel. Uh, Davis Love found the squirrel and, and carried it around the golf course. I know that was on the media that uh, you know Sammy became the mascot for the USA. I don't know how Kyle, uh, Kyle stole the squirrel for a day or so. I don't know how that happened, but he ended up having that. And then, then it started raining. Thursday, uh, between Thursday and the conclusion of play on Sunday, we had three inches of rain with 45 minutes after the conclusion of play and the ceremony had another inch of rain. So, you know, you start having people consolidated in areas like this, and I'll show slides of what this area caused damage on the, the ninth green. But, you know, it started raining. And you can see, you know, patrons out there having drinking beer, having a good time, but it's raining. Uh, and it rained more. The you know, funny thing is, is you, when you have these events, you have a meteorologist on staff. Uh, Stu, Will, Stu Williams is a really, really good guy. You know, he was saying that this was such an anomaly for October. I mean, first, first of all, I think of 20 years, there's the most amount of rain in that period of time he's ever seen, according to all the data. But the atmospheric moisture was 200% above normal. We were having like tropical weather in October. It just doesn't happen. You know, the week before the tournament, perfect. The week after, you know, Saturday after the tournament, I think I was outside on the golf course and I was like, perfect. I'm like, God, why couldn't this have been this week? You know, five years of your life, go into this, not just like grounds crew, me, Rich, and everybody else, but all the people from h &S Sports, all the people from the club, everybody from the city, you know, you want to have four good days. You know, one rain day you can get, but you know, the weather we had was just absolute crap. Then you can see this type of thing, you know, because all the rain, you know, Friday we didn't finish our, our matches, we ran out of light, then Saturday we got destroyed on Saturday night. I mean, every bunker was washed out, but you can see you know, all the puddling, the rain going on, people trying to get out. And then when this ends, when the rain stops, the first thing happens is you've got the rules officials saying, all right, Paul, when can we play? I mean, literally, pictures like that, it stops. When are you going to be able to play? Well, it's not like you can exactly get on your golf cart and just drive the golf course real quick. You've got 39,000 people on the golf course. So the one day, you know, I parked my cart on 18. I sprint up number five, run down the center of the fairway, and you know, number five or 15 is a, a par five. People are all boozed up. They're like, oh man, you're gonna have a heart attack. You're going down, you know, the whole nine yards. So you run up 15, you run 16, you run back to 17, run 18. And then you're talking to guys, Rich and Matt and everybody like, all right, what are you seeing? And, and they, they were saying, you know, we've got to get going right away because we got to finish. We're gonna run our national uh, or television time. You got to get this done quickly. But you also want to present your best product so but it gets to the point where not that you ever compromise your standards but at some point it becomes about finishing the tournament and making sure you have a winner come Sunday so the pressure is really these times is really really tough you can pull it in a lot of different directions then there's other problems you know you got your wife that's stuck in the vodka tent and she wants to know when play is going to suspend or when, when it's going to start playing because she uh she's getting a little tired and She's been drinking, she got to get to the bathroom, she goes to the bathroom, she can't get back in the vodka tent. So those problems are going on. Like, Anne Louise, stay in the vodka tent, you'll be fine. Let me worry about the golf course. So yeah, those type of issues. Uh, President's Cup, I mean, obviously these structures, the build out was really, really, really big. You can see that all this sheet flow water is coming off and ra raising havoc with bunkers. I mean, this bunker was bad, 11 greenside bunker 
or lemon tent caused a lot of problems with sheet flow onto the green. 15 was washing out the bunker on the left of 15. 16 was raising havoc. I mean, you know, for the memorial, our tents aren't that close. You know, we don't have them that close, but you know, this was about making sure people could see golf and especially with being consolidated. So the structures were so much closer to plane surfaces. When you have, you know, that tent, it's just sheet flowing all the water and washing out bunkers. That caused some other issues. Then, you know, you got play suspended, guys out there, you know, you got, you got all these different crews trying to get bunkers fixed back up, get the water out of them, you know, try to get them raked. You can see the crowds with the suspension of play, you know, squeezing water. You know, we're very fortunate. We have a good drainage system in fairways. So these guys are trying to squeeze you the water to the catch basins to get it off the surface. But, you know, by the time we got to the Sunday, you know, our soils were so saturated that any, any type of rain, a tenth of an inch, 15 hundreds, two tenths, was going to cause casual water. You know, this is Jared Waite, um, you know, on the bunkers on 18. Uh, you know, Jared uh, actually is one of our new assistants. He uh, volunteered for two memorials and also the President's Cup was a standout volunteer. And with all the people we lost after the pre President's Cup, it was sort of a mass exodus. Guys, that got, I was very fortunate to have a lot of guys stay to do the President's Cup. As soon as the President's Cup was over, it was time for them to move on to superintendent's positions and you know, other type of things. So we lost a lot of guys and Jared's one of our newer additions. Uh, you know, teamwork. I mean, every time we would get to like 18, uh, and I'll get to the slides later, 18, we have 20, we have 80 bunkers on the golf course, uh, 40 on the front, 40 on the back, but 17 and 18 got 20 of those bunkers with nine being here. And these nine bunkers caused us a lot of indigestion. But you can see guys bucketing the sand or the water out, taking to a catch basin to make it go out and just try to get these bunkers playable. And a lot of times we're here and the group's on 17, about ready to come into us. And we're just going like hell to try to get the golf course playable. One of the issues, I showed that slide number nine with all the consolidation of the people. You know, it was so muddy that when it rained, the rain came down so hard that all the silt and water came onto the ninth green. And you can see the sediment, it's Clay Stewart, another Ohio State uh, former graduate. So, you know, it's Saturday between groups. So what do you do on a situation? You get hoses out, you're hosing off the green. First thing I'm doing, like, all right, talking to the rules officials, make sure the media knows what's going on, going on, because it's all you need, you know, Johnny Miller saying, well, you know, they're trying to get the grain out of the green by washing off whatever or some, something stupid that's not the, proper, not the proper thing. So you send out the message, make sure the media knows, hey, we got silt on the greens. We got to take that silt off because it's going to potentially impact the, the infiltration of the grain could ruin it. So we got to get that silt off plus, the, plus the, the aesthetic value of that. So, you know, it gets done raining, you know, an inch and you're out there with hoses washing off the green. People would think you're nuts, but there's a, there's a reason for it. So, getting to Saturday, we never finished the matches on Friday due to light. We just ran out of light. So, we started at 4 a.m. and had a shotgun start at 7.35 on holes 12 through 16. And then knowing that the matches might not end on 16, that we had to then prepare, you know, 17, 18. Then go back after that and go do 1 and 18, prepare the golf course again for the other match. So, you know, we had people out doing all these different practices, you know, once again, trying to keep crews one to two holes ahead of this. And so like Saturday, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, volunteers and staff, there, there was no downtime. These guys just went, I mean, from four o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock at night, just went straight through. Come back to the tent, grab something to eat, gear back up, potential rain, get everybody out. But Sunday was a miracle. By this time, the rain on Saturday that washed out all the bunkers again, by that time, you know, ground saturated. And in October, that late, or that you know, October, it wasn't like we're having any type of drying weather, you know, like a big 25 mile hour wind. You know, like I said earlier, the atmospheric moisture was 200% above normal. There's no drying. So any type of rain that was gonna happen could potentially cause a suspension of play. So we came in again, once again, at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, got holes 11 through 16, finished 18, and then went back out. And then the other round for Sunday started at 9 o'clock. So we had 12 matches going on at that time. So what we did is, knowing that there was rain, I mean, when I came in, I was there, you know, started the crew at 4 o'clock, went to the meteorology trailer at 5.15, 
if you were looking at the radar, Stuart's like, you're not even going to make the 735 shotgun start. Just not going to happen. You're going to get rained out. We got lucky. Didn't rain. You know, went around us, maybe a little missed, but we just got lucky on that. So what we did is we had groups on every hole that there was a match. We had four to eight people with squeegees, buckets, rakes, the whole nine yards. And as that hole was released, they then went to the front of the chain and just kept doing that all day long, making sure we get play. And a little bit of rain, especially like a tent situation, like an 11, uh, start putting water on the green, you know, start squeezing that off. But all working with the rules officials. You know, no guy goes onto a green and takes a liberty of saying, all right, I'm gonna get that water off the green, unless the rules people dictate that, like, you know, uh, Steve Rintoul or Mark Russell. So we did that all day Sunday and got really, really lucky to, to, get, to, to finish this thing. So getting close. We're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. You know, this is 18, things going on. And, you know, and then we had some very patriotic fans. Uh, had the streaker. I, I censored this. You know, actually, Rich, Rich censored this. I was going to show the full Monty, but I, he, he told me it wouldn't be good to do. But so, you know, this is going on. This is how my week's going. I'm on 11 with my wife, the streaker's on 18. So the just week wasn't going good for PBL, but you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, yeah, but she, she ran pretty quick. Uh, she lost her phone and, and the best part is she came back to get her clothes and got all kinds of pictures with H&S Sports, uh, all the, the operation guys. So I thought that was pretty cool. So get done with the tournament, uh, move the, the ceremonies inside to make sure that, you know, we could finish the, the ceremonies being finished. Uh, Within 45 minutes, another inch of rain just downpoured. Once again, bunkers destroyed the whole nine yards. And at that time, your volunteers were all leaving. They're, you know, but with that being said, we had a lot of volunteers that knew the weather situation, canceled flights, stayed Sunday to make sure we got through and stayed on to Monday. But you know, so obviously United States won, which was good. Uh, got through that. And then you, you start looking at this, you know, all these big crowds, restoration. You know, what, what do you got left when this is done? Start looking at areas like this. I mean, completely destroyed, completely destroyed. You know, traffic areas by the putting green. Just a little difference. You know, we were open for the memorial. We keep the people in this area here so we don't mess these areas up. And that's the putting green, just completely destroyed. Uh, you know, taking out the signs on the tees, you know, with the bent grass in the back, all the stuff underneath the tents. I mean, this is a concession area that's just destroyed. Uh, NBC, my good buddies. Uh, you know, this machine is buried off, off of number one. You know, they, they, they got stuck every hole they want, and they just kept driving these things. Like, you know, they, they, in their defense, they've got, to get, they've got to get the television. But, you know, I'm looking at all the, all the restoration that we're going to have to do. I mean, you look at these areas, foot traffic, ruts from all the different carts. I mean, how do you fix this? So, you know, the hardest part of this was basically just for the week after the tournament, let it dry out, do nothing. Then, you know, we've got these rollers. We rolled uh, probably, I'd say, 40 to 50 acres of rough, and guys on Salsco rollers just rolling, just trying to get it smooth so we can then come back in and do some form of restoration. You know, we did a lot of overseeding. Uh, some areas like nine, we just basically rode it till that whole area started back up on that. Uh, 29 acres for restoration, 4.5 4 acres were sodded. Uh, the way we tried to do that, and also 24 acres were, uh, were seeded. Uh, four point acres were sodded, 24 were seeded. We also did some hydro seeding. The rule of thumb was that if there was a tent in a location and another tent's going to go back for the memorial, we would just hydro seed those, put down some winter wheat, try to stabilize those areas. But you got to remember, you know, it took three months for this to get built up. It took a long time for this stuff to get off the golf course. I mean, there's areas that we hydro seeded with winter wheat they were almost into Thanksgiving that the winter wheat didn't even come up because we we're so late and then the winter we had. So there's a lot of areas out there on the golf course that we still haven't done, or haven't completed restoration. Then also know we got a tournament in the spring of the year. Uh, and then the other variable is all the areas we overseeded. You know, some of those areas we only got one or two mowings on those seedlings. You know, with the winter we had, we could have winter kill. We could be doing this whole thing all over again. Uh, another bridge, this one really got screwed up. This one actually bent the beams underneath, and the problem with that is all the stuff coming off the golf course, this was one of the main arteries of the golf course. And you've got, you remember, you got three different contractors trying to take all this stuff off, and they're like gypsies. They want out of there, the circus. You know, they're, they're trying to get out of there, and they're not coordinating with each other. So, you know, we had to get this bridge fixed. They had to put new, oh, new beams in there and that kind of stuff. 
Uh, once we get done with all that, we also made a change to 16 green. Basically tried to float the back of this green. This green sloped off a little bit. So that was a project we worked on, added uh, some mix onto that, uh, trying to make the percent of slope. I think it goes a quarter percent from here this way so it doesn't fall off and hopefully it holds some balls in that area. You can see the sod going back on that. And you can still see this is going on. We still haven't got all the, the tents. I mean, look, look how destroyed that is underneath that. We sodded that whole area underneath 16. And, you know, guys, it, do, it doesn't, this is never about one individual. It's about a collective group. You know, you're only as good as your people. I mean, I was very, very fortunate to have unbelievable staff that would do this. I mean, you know, you look at the year we have, I mean, it takes a special person to have that type of dedication. I think from April to October, I think I had three days off, including like weekends. And the other time I took off was to go to like the US Open or the PGA Championship. I mean, you're gonna take, you know, six months of your life and say, I'm gonna put everything on hold and all I'm gonna do is work. Now, for me, it's a lot of personal satisfaction saying for myself and the guys like Rich and everyone else that not many people have the opportunity to do this. It's a once in a lifetime experience. But it takes a special individual and the, the, the cohesiveness of having all these different volunteers come from different places uh, throughout the United States and then to have the crew to take that much personal pride and satisfaction to be able to sacrifice saying that they're going to work, you know, 100 hours a week or 80 hours a week and they're not barbecuing on weekends. I mean, don't get me wrong, we try to give guys off, but it took a special group of people to do that. And uh, you're only as good as your people. It only as good as your people, so that's all I got. Any questions? How am I on time? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, well, what was the uh, feedback from the membership like, obviously, with the two, two big tournaments like, a few months from each other? How many weeks was the golf course actually <coughs> with the membership? Well, I mean, obviously, it, you know, I think the build-out going through the summer and AT&T was something that was a little bit of an inconvenience, but you know, there's also a lot of personal pride. You know, a member, it's a member at Mirfield to be associated with the President's Cup. I think all the members are very proud of what happened. Uh, it was good for the fact that it came off well. I mean, obviously, the rain was disappointing to a lot of people, but, you know, all it is, I mean, our rounds were about the same. They just consolidated. I mean, you know. June, July, August, and September were very, very busy months for golf. Uh, I don't think we'll be doing any double tournaments anytime in the near future, because it, it, it's a sacrifice. It is a huge sacrifice, but what that does is it, it, it puts you on the national spotlight, and also it's good for membership attraction, where you know we potentially maybe gain some members out of this, where they see the event, they come here, they're a part of it and they say they want to join. So it's good on that aspect. But I don't think the vast majority would want to do this anytime in the next two or three years, which is nothing on the books for us to do that. And I know I, I would need a few more years. I, I can tell you, there's very, very few times in my career that I don't want to be at work. Monday after Memorial, Tuesday after Memorial, Wednesday after Memorial, and when, I mean, that week, as soon as I got to work and drove around, saw what was going on, I wanted to go home. I just, it was, I think we all went through a little mental part of it just because you put so much into it. And you know, the whole time going in this, you know, Jack and I talked all the time, like, man, we want firm and fast. This is gonna be great. This is our opportunity to have what we want, you know, and to have it be totally counter of what we thought it was gonna be. But that's the variability of the business. I mean, it's just bad luck. I mean, week before, two weeks after, no issues. It's just, there's something to this, uh, tournaments we have and inclement weather seems to be a part of it but you know with that being said uh, Jack was very complimentary of the staff and what we did and you know it's not how we want it to go but we did the best we possibly could and that's all you can do you know I, I'm my biggest concerns or you know be, what's in the past is in the past making sure that we get back to where we were before the President's Cup for the memorial and that's gonna be a challenge I mean with the spring and everything else I mean we I mean, I've seen the course get bookered up during tournaments, but nothing like this. I mean, it's, it was, it was mind boggling. And, you, and I brought other people, I'm like, what are your thoughts on how to fix this? And people look like, I don't know. And then there's budgets. It's not like you can sort everything out. You know, there's a restoration budget. So, you know, Matt Powell did a great job on putting together all the different plans for the different areas and then working with the tour to figure out, you know, what we're gonna do and, and that kind of stuff. You know, 
it'd be easy if you saw it everything, but that's obviously not going to happen because there's, there's cost prohibitive. Do you get the street What's that? The Uh, th there was a there was a special uh, tournament budget for the President's Cup, and basically what we did is we duplicated what we did for the Memorial. Uh, I think labor we might have been a little bit less just because we still couldn't sustain all the people that we wanted to with you know a lot of college students and interns. You know, interns, you know, Ohio State guys were back. Now, with that being said, a lot of the Ohio State guys that worked for me in the spring and then the summer, you know, they they, they took time off from school and came out and helped out where they could help out. That's one other thing. Uh, we uh, every year we have guys that are you know in turf programs and stuff like that. If you're looking for potentially working a Saturday or Sunday and getting on your resume a little tournament experience, we're pretty flexible. So if you're looking for employment, you know reach out to myself or Mr. Dannenberger or Rich. And uh, like I said, we've had guys that'll come and work you know one Saturday and a Tuesday afternoon just to get exposed to it. And then from there, you know we can help you place you in an intern position. But you know, just just get you a feel for what you might potentially be getting into if, if you have that type of thing. I can tell you, tournament preparation, either either you love it or you hate it. I've had guys that you know come through the program, um, and by then of summer, there's only one thing clear cut. They want nothing to do with this ever again. You know, they want to go to a small club and just do their thing and be home by three thirty, four o'clock, and you know, unfortunately, you know, it doesn't work that way when you have these type of events. I mean, you know, it's, it's a lot of, you know, everything we do is no different than a lot of the superintendents do. It's just that a few million people are, are watching it. So if we make a mistake, we look like an idiot. So you try to keep your P's and Q's, you know, real tight and just make sure you're not making mental mistakes. And that was probably my biggest concern was burnout with staff. Uh, you know, because it's, it's a lot to ask these people to do this type of work for start. I mean, it starts in March and go all the way through October, November. It was a long haul. All right, well, guys, thank you for letting me, guys and girls, thank you for letting me be here. I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs>